today we have a wonderful person uh, that I've been following on Facebook uh, and there's just something about him, something about him. He was preaching once in in uh, Kronstadt with Owen Quickly and them. They had a concert with Kaden Bukes and them. And then I saw pics of him taken. And I don't know what made me ask Kaden's wife who that guy was. I don't know why until today. <laughs> and then I contacted him and then we were friends for about a year or two. Yeah. And then we met like three years later. Three years later, that is true. Mr. Leo Dos Santos, very powerful <laughs> young man of God. Uh, 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 I, I wish I had what you have when I was your age, man. Sure. I started ministry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when, yeah. At your age. Sure. And, and, and that's like 10 years ago. Sure. You Come understand? On. That's when I started. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Because after I, I left the bottle, mm -hmm. the brown one. <laughs> the brown <laughs> <laughs> I and I, I wanted to get married and everything. Yeah. Uh, this guy has, has been has been going around. He has a prophetic ministry, a healing ministry. He's been healing. You know, God has been healing people through him. Yeah. Uh, him and my, and my wife just spoke about how a lady was in a wheelchair, wheelchair bound. Yeah, and, and then she's now she's she free. Now she was free. Um, she was wow. getting ready for amputation. Yo. I prayed for the Saturday evening. Mm. Um, the amputation was scheduled for the Tuesday afternoon. And after we prayed, she walked and she's never seen that wheelchair Praise again. The Lord. Wow. So God wow. is the healing minister. That's is there. powerful. That's powerful. And you see what's happening. <laughs> we busy with the introduction and then God just takes over. Yeah, so Mr. Leo De Santos born and bred in Reicher Park. Reicher Park. Is it Boxburg? Yeah, Next, it's in Boxburg, Boxburg in the East Reicher Reicher Park, hallelujah. So yeah, so uh, we are going to talk about you. We want to know who Leo De Santos is. We want to know what you're about and what you have, what what activities are you busy with and which programs are coming up and where do you see yourself in the future and what your heart is for the gospel mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. So who is Leo Dos Santos in <laughs> terms of where you are now? Mm -hmm. So basically Leo Dos Santos is a 25 year old evangelist um, called and ordained um, as an evangelist. And I was, I was about 18 when I was in matric and I started leading prayer groups at school actually. Wow. And there was a sir, but he passed away. Mm. Uh, may he rest in peace. His name was Mr. Velasi. And he approached me one day and he said, you know what? Um, there's something about you. Um, I, I, I can't put my fingers on it, but there's something about you. And why don't you join me break time? That time we had break time. So we were not mm. really allowed to have an official prayer meeting at yes. school. Yes. But break time, we were allowed to use the classroom and actually gather there. We started gathering and I started praying. And when he, when he heard me pray, that's when he actually said, but hey, there's something about you. And at that point in time, I was a bit shy to say that I am, I'm, I'm actually a, a third generation preacher. Where my, my yeah. parents are in ministry, my uncles are in ministry, and my grandfather. Oh. Oh, oh. Um, he's actually an apostle, um, Dr. Apis, um, Henry Apis, okay. uh, and he's planted about over 35 churches wow. throughout South Africa. So he's pioneered wow. for the Lord. And I remember one Mother's Day service, he said to me, um, a lot of the people had left the church at the time, they were visiting family, and he said, I want you to lead the service for me. And I didn't know what to do at that point in time. Yeah. And I climbed to be pulpit and, and I just started closing my eyes. And I said, Lord, have your way. And as I started ministering, people heard me for the first time. Is that Asia? I was about 17, 18 at the time. And that is when other people are in their prime of enjoying yeah. life outside of Christ. I'm thinking where I was. Exactly. I was <laughs> so busy. basically I was Something in my, else. going into my prime in Christ now. Wow. And he said, lead the service. And ever since then, I, I said, Lord, this is what I'm called to. I felt it when I was on that podium, on the pulpit. And when I started ministering, I never understood growing up in church how people begin to speak in tongues. But mm -hmm. that day, when that, mm. that Mother's Day service, when I closed my eyes, the mm. Holy Spirit just took over. And the Bible says in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, mm. so you will receive power. And I felt that, you know, and mm. ever since I've pursued ministry, I went to study sound engineering and music production. And the oh, Lord took that? me. Yeah, so I studied a bit of sound and um, music production. Yeah, I used to work on all the softwares, Pro Tools, the works, and all of that. Serious. Um, yeah, I went through that, and I thought that I was going to do. That was my career. Yeah, yeah. And a year later, God took me out of there and said, I haven't called you for this. Mm. I then did missionary work for a full year. I left mm. everything, no salary, nothing. And I started traveling the country um, with my grandfather and then another bishop. Um, everybody knows him as Bishop Dinky, but he's actually Bishop Lionel Isaac Jacobs. Okay. And back then we traveled, we did the entire South Africa. And that, I was just an assistant, like an armor bearer. Yes, bring yes. a Bible, that, uh, that's bring how you a start. Start. That's, and, how you and that's all I did. So I just wanted to serve for a full year. 
Just I served, I didn't ask for any platform, I was just serving. Mm. Year went by, I said to my parents, I'm leaving the studies. Mm. And they were. At first, because it's a lot of imagine. money. It was I a lot of money. Imagine. Sound engineering is very expensive mm. to study. Yeah, sound and production. Sound. Audio and visual is Yeah, it's very expensive. expensive. And they said, you know what? They came around and they supported me ever since I made the decision. I then went into outreach ministry and in the communities reaching the lost. You know, and the, the prophetic word God gave me was literally, if you reach the people that no one wants, I will give you the people that everybody wants. And that messed me up completely. And ever since then, I've just been wow. pursuing ministry. And wow. it's almost 10 years later it's now. It's powerful, and man. 25 years old. And God, has been, God has been That's so amazing. That's amazing, man. So uh, 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 it's, 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 it's interesting how it happened. How it happened because like you, 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 didn't, you didn't really go into experiencing other things yeah, so far. Yeah. Uh, you've had your struggles yeah. in the gospel. Yeah, exactly. You, you ups and downs Yeah, you can put it that way. <laughs> yes, you, you fell back. Back while you are in the gospel, and you, you understand, and, and, and look, looking true. at your at your age, it's, it's really powerful. I'm learning so much from you, man. Um, uh, you you you've, you've been traveling around, and you've you've seen a lot of things. Is there something that you do? You now know what you do in in the gospel. Do you now understand yourself like somebody who is in music and say, yeah, uh, I'm more of a pop person. Yeah, yeah. I'm, so so, so but I've I've discovered my identity first in Christ. It's very important to know who you are in Christ. Exactly. So once you know who you are, you know where to go, yes. what to do, and yes. how to do it. And when you're in business, you know your target market, you know who you want to reach, whatever. Sure. So if, you, if you're selling uh, cell phones for that matter, you know the age mm. group, you know mm. the, the market that you're looking at. And, and I said, Lord, allow me to, to become the balance between young and old. Mm. And I'm at a stage where I'm able to draw young people to Christ and older people wow. by being unique, by yes. being authentic in Christ. Yes. The older generation is more word-based and everything is ya yeah and, and amen. And the younger guys are more hip. So I've come in, in, in between that gap yes. basically where yes. I said, I'm going to do church differently. Wow. Contemporary that, um, the, that the group mentor had said, you're solving and you're clear and you're yeah, in yeah. dieting. Yeah. Move and yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> I can do I get a pike in my cup and I come in the easy to take a pike in my cup. Uh, ma, come a case to my oma say, my kind come who is so mark a pike for the devil. Why, why? And the pike, you got to say, I look at it's like a nice, yeah, they had all of this, yeah, and exactly. It <laughs> yes, yes, sense. yes. So it sounded right, and I yeah. thought it had to be, but when I discovered the fullness of who God actually is. Yeah. He was not concerned with your outer appearance. Mm -hmm. Because I've experienced one day, there was a guy who came to church and he was, man, wasted. The pants were below the buttocks. Everything was bad. And at that point in time, we had to act out of wisdom. Yes. And, and place ourselves in issues. What if he came to surrender his life that day and all he had was how he looked? <laughs> Are we going to tell him, go back and come back properly? So we had to make a decision and say, you know what, come as you are. So basically, that's how I do youth ministry now and a normal ministry well. like that, where uh, my, my, who I am is not defined by what I wear. Yes. So yes. the moment you see me yes. in a suit, you've got a different perception true, of me. True. I remember I was preaching in the Cape a few years ago and I preached in a dungri for the first time mm. ever. And a communication and man, the mood just set. The entire mood fell. Because people expected suits, it was from Joburg, yeah, he's got to yeah, be there. Yeah. And I said, God told me intentionally that evening, I want you to break every religion spirit in the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes. And I went in and I preached my yes. heart. How do you say that? As AKA, what preach in the dangri. So we literally <laughs> broke barriers like that. And that is why oh. I am in ministry, just doing ministry different. You know, reaching um, the lost at any cost. You know, Hallelujah. you don't know. I don't need a platform. I think wow. TDJ said the church is not defined by a building. It's, it's not. It's so not. I it's literally, okay. the church is out there. Yeah. Um, Facebook is my church. 5,000 yes. members, 5,000 friends. Yeah. That's my yeah. care. Same, same as me. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, that, that is my church. Exactly, so I exactly. got to maintain that and spread the gospel. Hey guys, what's up? It's Real Talk with Leo Dos Santos. This is our first episode of our first video clip. And today's title is Let Them Wonder. Let, let them wonder if you're still serving the Lord. Let them wonder what's happening in your life. Let them wonder if you're still with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Let them wonder if you have 
a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Don't allow the pressures of social media to get you to post everything that is happening in your life. Know what to share with who. Know how much of yourself you are giving to the world. If you understood how many people are praying for your downfall, then you'd realize that I cannot post everything on social media. Not every girl that goes off Facebook is pregnant. You see, so many people sum up others based on how active they are on social media. If they don't post anymore, something has happened or something must be. Just because I don't post it doesn't mean God is not blessing me. Just because I don't share it doesn't mean I'm not happy or content. Just because I don't post it doesn't mean it does not exist. Don't become that predictable person on social media where people sum you up based on what you fed them. It's about time that you let them starve and let them wonder what is happening in your life. Never allow social media to determine how active you should be on your social media. I pray that this will bless someone. God bless you and remember, share this with somebody and let them wonder. Welcome back guys, we are still sitting here, please it's not aka with glasses, <laughs> this is Mr. Leo Dos Santos and I think you got over 500 likes with a lookalike thing that you put out. Maybe, I don't want to brag, let me correct you. <laughs> I think I got about 2,000. Yeah, man! I'm <laughs> yeah, like 500. 2,500. Wow. And then about 1,700 1, shares. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, yeah they, they, they promise you. People want you to be, <laughs> aka. Yeah, yeah, so I partake in every challenge. That's awesome. That's um, awesome. And the, that shows. I, I like where. the way you are. I like the way you are on, 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 on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, the jokes that you yeah, share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? And at the same time, because what, what I've learned in ministry, is if you if you can't reach you know uh, uh, win the trust of somebody yes you won't be able to come with anything to, to convince them in any message so when when you do something in that way i yeah. think somebody's also learning at the moment when you not try not to be too serious yeah. on a yeah. platform where you try to reach people or, or win people over. exactly and i was sorry i was actually sharing with someone earlier yes. and i was saying that people are so fixated that they see you either preach or on social media and they have this perception of who you are but they forget you mm. just as human you're not immune exactly. to anger you're not immune to any problem yes. to any situation yes. you know yes. you're the very the very same guy i am on the pulpit yes when i go back home i need to do dishes i need to clean Amen. i need Amen. to Amen. understand that's so true. that's we, true we're not immune we are still that and once you show people that you actually real there's not an idea mm. of who leo dos santos is yeah. he's actually leo dos santos yeah. a person you know people begin to engage and say but i actually like that because he's showing who he is yes. he's not showing a part yes. of who he is yes. or what he wants people to know which about is a him. mask in, in 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 most cases and i'm, and I'm not saying your calling is a mask yeah I'm yeah yeah yeah. we're trying to put on this thing which, which is unnecessary it's unnecessary in, in, in because now you've got and that's when you yes. said when you gain the trust so now i've got to gain your trust again yes. because when you when you sit with me like this you've you've i've exposed you to a different side of me Amen. and there's now this doubt between but there's now like a split personality who am i engaging with yeah. is it leo on the pulpit or yeah. is it leo off the pulpit off you know pulpit. so you've got to exactly. come in and that's where your identity comes in again so once you know who you are you've got to be able to flow in in, in and accept who you are and allow people to get to know you, the real oh. you. When you came to your parents with a message and said, uh, I'm going to leave what you want me to do. I know it's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to do this thing, but I, it doesn't have an income yet. I don't know how I'm yeah, going to do it. Yeah, yeah. What, what happened there? Was there was, was, is there something that you can mention which, which you feel comfortable I'll with? I'll definitely share two things regarding yes. that. The first thing was with, with my parents. Um, when God calls you, it is not your responsibility to worry about what people will say, number one. Wow. Number two, it's not your responsibility to defend what you want to do if God has called you. I said, Hallelujah. He says in his word, be still and know that I am God. Hmm. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Wow. So there's certain things when you begin to share, your responsibility is not to defend your decision, it's allowing God to say that, listen, yeah, I've called this young man mm. and I'm going to prove it to you and I'm going to allow certain things to happen mm. because we live in a time, the Bible says you've got to believe in order to see. Mm -hmm. We live in a time where I want to see yes. before and God before, is so gracious. In order to exactly. God is so gracious that he'll allow something to happen for you to see. Mm. And they, when they started seeing, seeing me in ministry, I remember I preached in Eden Park one year. Mm. And that same year, that was actually that same year. 
and they released an article in the newspaper and I didn't even know about that. Oh. And those are little things that God will use yeah. where testimonies yeah. come in. Yeah. And, but that's my son. For, for the unbeliever, for the person that struggled to believe. Exactly. So that was, and I couldn't, at, at first it was difficult because my parents are realist. Yeah. And I thank God for that, that there's a real side to that way. Mm. You know, it's, it, it, I'm not saying it's wrong to just be spiritual, but it's very important to look at life and say, Let's, do you have a plan in place as to where you are going? Yes. And at that yes. point in time, I could not answer my parents. And that was the, 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 the blockage to say, but if you have a plan in place, yes, we can support you. I can't invest in your business if I don't know what I'm investing in. Mm. So you've got to come with something to the table and assure, give me assurance to say that, you know what? It makes sense. You understand it what I'm saying? Sense. So I had to come and I had to explain. And after that, I started doing um, voluntary teaching in the mm. community in Recha Park, mm. where um, children were struggling to read and write. Mm. So I was building up my profile in ministry while I'm doing God's work mm. that can sustain me moving on. Mm. I eventually studied a bit of English teaching. Um, I did a bit of TEFL teaching. Mm. So that I can now reflect on that and say, but whilst I was doing ministry, I didn't just stop everything else. Yes, you know, yes. The second part that I want to share is, I remember when the day my grandfather ordained me as an evangelist, mm. the entire church board that day left the church. Hij neer, hij het allemaal uitgestapt. Serieus. And I was broken. I said, Lord, mm. are you really going to allow? Is this really yeah, happening? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was told, jy is, jy het die salve, jy het die roepen, daar is niks. Die kind. As a family child bezig. Come, yeah, How can yeah. this child? Was it, was, it, was it your grandfather's church? My or? grandfather's church. And he's my spiritual covering, um, my mentor oh. today. The one that you had um, a big meal with on his birthday? Every year. <laughs> every single year. Yes, you said that yes, on Facebook. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And he ordains oh. me. And So this is what, what happens now. Something good happens. But at the same time, something bad happens. Mm. And me being selfless, I'm like, you know what, dad, granddad, let's leave this. I don't think I'm called for the ministry because of what happened. How yeah, can God yeah. call me? Yeah. But it's like you building, but somebody's breaking. Yeah. Am I the one that's breaking? Yes, yes. And he says, before God can add to your life, he's got to subtract. God is the greatest mathematician and he works with the Bodmas rule. Where before addition comes, subtraction needs to happen. Oh, wow. So that needed to happen so before God could actually add. Yo. And since then, the church has grown tremendously. Wow. So God had to take that, use that situation mm. and say, son, this is what will happen in ministry. They did this to Jesus. Who are you? Who are you? So he had to immediately put me in a certain situation yeah. to tell me, son, is this what you want to do? Are you prepared for this? If they slap me on my right cheek, am I going to turn around? Wow, that's So amazing, you've got to endure the process and know yeah. that I've been called by God yes. and not men. So you see, be behind all the glamour behind all the traveling the, <laughs> the, the, the over tumbles and the, the glaciers and all the serious and all that there is a story there is a story and that's what we should that, that's a part that, that's very much important of your true. whole life you understand I'm, 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 I'm a true believer in testimonies because yeah. the Bible says it saves a yeah, life it does save lives. true testimony saves lives so now that we heard uh, who you are and everything. Uh, let's quickly just look at this ad, uh, something that they're busy with organizing. It's coming in September, so we'll be back now. Hey guys, what's up? We're super excited to announce as UAFC and Leo Dos Santos that Jonathan Rubain will be coming to Johannesburg for three days. We'll be having him from the 6th to the 8th of September in Johannesburg East, in Johannesburg South, as well as Pretoria. Due to the demand, we're going to have it in three different places, three awesome nights of punkster. People from Ennerdale and Rege Park, you don't have to come to Pretoria, we're coming to you. People from Pretoria, you don't have to travel to Johannesburg any longer. We'll be there on the Saturday evening. Guys, we've got awesome news. Tickets are only 100 Rand. 
So I hope to see you guys there Friday, Saturday. You can come all three nights. You can choose when you want to come. It's going to be awesome. We're going to glorify the name of God and we're going to have fun. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon. God bless you. We are still talking about, you know, the realness of ministry, where you come from, what setbacks you had and so on. And, and, and you've encouraged me so much until now. Uh, now that you know where you come from, now, now that you've seen God's mm -hmm, hand, mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself? Where? What would you like to, to 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 become? You know, you've seen. We, we have T D Jakes. We have yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Musa Sono. We have all these guys that we that, that we know that we look up to. Where do you, do you see Leo dos Santos? It's it's quite amazing that you mention um, those great gifts. The world doesn't need another Bishop Musa Sono. Yeah. Nor does the world need another Bishop T D Jakes. Amen. The world needs a Pastor Brian. Wow. An evangelist Leo. Amen. Being true to who you are. Sure. Each of those great gifts has found their identity mm. and they've built their ministry on that. Amen. So you'd see a lot of the minist ministry can relate that we're having church, we have Sunday church. There's there's this there's like 80% of church we have in common. Mm. It's a service, it's Sunday service. But the 20% that is where the identity comes in and we do church a little different. Mm. We might have three services, you guys might have two services. Mm. So they've discovered who they are. And me as a young man, I'm in a place where God is transitioning me from having everyday church um, or having church on a Sunday to having church differently in terms of any location, mm. any time. Mm. Why do we have to have a set time on that Sunday morning? Yeah, yeah. So if you're working in an area, or if you if your church is based in an area where a lot of the people are working shifts, mm. do you, should you honestly still pursue church on a Sunday morning at half past eight for someone who just came out of night shift? Are we being fair on that person? Yo. So you've got to look at that. And I said, Lord, allow me to identify something that I would be unique in. Mm. And a few years ago, I started the movement called Word and Worship. Mm. And we traveled um, around. We were actually birthed in PE. And we were just doing church differently. So we'd mm. have a full, solid setup of authentic praise, worship, have a word, no charge, have everything in place, stage, lights, and just doing, I want you to have an encounter when you come to church. Mm, mm, mm. And moving <clears throat> from that, I've discovered that I want to do church differently. I want to go into a cinema. I want to book a cinema. Mm. And so we're having church there. Yes. You're in the mall while you're shopping. Hmm. When you're done shopping, don't go home and change and everything. Mm. Come as you are, go put yes. the things in the car, leave yes. the trolley there, and, come and quickly come up to the cinema. it's not about where you belong. It's not about the kind, yes, exactly. Church is not defined by the location you're in wow. or the building you're in. So uh, that is how I want to build church. I want to have pop-up church. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. I'm going to advertise for the yes. next month. We're going to have church one Sunday mm. in an area where church... Like people cannot go to church, so we'll mm. take the church to them yes. and bless them and just have that 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 that, that generation that is unashamed yes. to serve God in spirit and in truth anyway. Because we we we've developed this thing that when I go to church, I've gotta portray myself in a certain manner that I'll mm. hanek dira dal van dood skare wees ek by die keer kom moet ek letterlik portray dat alles al right is by die huis. Mm. But I wanna have pop up church where you come and you cry and you say, yes. Lord, I need you and I need you now, regardless of the situation, my surroundings regardless of the stage, the light, because ons met so, so, ons met ons mooi maak, and alles moet net on point, is that you, jy vergeet, like, the preacher can say, uh, you're the head and not the tail, maar as jy by the huis kom, you still feel like the tail. You don't feel like the head, yeah, exactly. So just doing church differently, and that is what we, we're doing, we've got this event coming up called Reckless Worship, we, mm -hmm. and I was telling uh, my friend, Minister Jay, that we've got to just be authentic in our worship, Mm. in our praise and the word that we deliver yes. so that there's an encounter that people meet Jesus yes. without me telling you about Jesus. Yes. Jesus or God's presence must tell you about it and say, you know what, I surrender my life. Hallelujah. So because you come and, 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 and there's so much condemnation in church. I love church, but we've got to be exactly. sorry. There's a lot of condemnation. Exactly. And if we can just do away with just a little bit of that, you'd be amazed at the mm. results. Yes. So the feedback on our side for, for, for the event, and as we're sharing with people, is so amazing because we just want to do church differently with the same God. And, and, and it's totally against uh, the system. It's totally against what, what, what we know how it should be. Uh, somebody, I was amazed last weekend, we had a, 
a mission summit we had an american speaker sure. at church at, at, at another venue yeah yeah uh, and then uh, uh, um, what happened was uh, this this old man like he's, he's a grown up and i think he's in his 60s or something he he got up and he introduced the the speaker from america and sure. before he did that he said people i'm tired of church wow and then i mean for 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 him to say that and everybody was quiet because the whole the whole weekend was about missions about yeah, going yeah. out about making the cycles because yes. we're so used to the four walls and he said i'm i'm tired of church and he said understand me understand me when when, when i said i'm not saying church is not good yes, yes. i'm just saying is we get so used to that and when you said all this i was thinking about it and now now it makes sense to me why he said i'm tired of exactly. church exactly because I, i'm doing praise and worship yeah. for the past 8 9 years now yeah, you know, yeah. since I, i i i since my first bishop yeah, r- yeah. R- realized that i can do something on stage yes yes and then i've been doing it and i'm still doing it and and i i feel like that sometimes yeah sunday morning you come am i am i going to dance the same dance on that song that we did last week exactly what's going to happen you understand yeah. i know it comes back to your personal relationship yes 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 how yes, fire yes. up you should be but then it can become a problem and True. i think your way and your vision will help this generation because we're so busy It's true. We 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 so busy working overtime during the week yeah. that we leave our shopping for Sunday. Exactly. And then that's an idea. Well, so we can, and can you blame people? Yeah. I mean, you already working six days. And there's some people that work seven days and still try by all means to attend an evening service. Yeah, yeah. But can we not just make it a little bit easy? What about those that can't? That, that can't, yes. you know. Take, oh, oh, you know, yes. I'm not saying that 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 we should spoon feed you. I understand we live in a time where it's not obligated to grow up in church. And what mm. do I mean by this is you've got people serving 20 years and they are growing old in church but not growing up. I'm not I saying mean, that which we, exactly. we, you understand what I'm saying. I'm not exactly. saying but I'm saying can we just make the uh, 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 can we just br- bring church at a point where it's easy there's easy access amen i'm going amen. to the mall straight after the mall amen. i'm going into church yes. after church i can go have coffee and yes. that guy is like god is god never changes who he is the but message, the methods yes. of yes. how he operates amen so amen. we've got to embrace and this is why i always brag that people say but you on facebook every day That's my church. I need to check up exactly. on my church. Exactly. I need to bless my church. Exactly. You understand? So exactly. that it's the most powerful tool. It is. Technology. It is. God has created somebody to put this in place for yeah. us. It is. So we've got to make use of the yes. measures and the avenues that we have. I was I was reading something that you put on uh, I can't remember what it was, but then you you've been saying I don't know who I'm talking to. Yes, yes. And then the the the, the last time I read it, uh, you, you you just put up uh, IDK IDK I don't know I don't know who I'm talking about <laughs> and I was like IDK and I read the sentence <laughs> twice and I came back and I was like oh I don't know I don't who know. I'm talking yeah. to so so, so <laughs> you you feel <laughs> Facebook is for the IDK moment <laughs> exactly where people don't you, you don't know who you're talking to about something and and, and some somebody might sit depressed in their corner somewhere the and then they are afraid to 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 show it in church and then Facebook will be where they receive a message and say, exactly but there's more and know, and that's the thing Facebook has become a safe haven to many people yes, out there. Yes. Um if man my inbox is flooded there's if I can wow. read you testimonies prayer mm. requests. There was a time where actually <laughs> I asked for prayer requests. Mm. And I thought yo this is a bit too hectic. There's one time I received that oh. evening close to your 600 prayer requests that evening wow. and I needed to get for wow. but so I wow. needed but there came a time where people started coming out their own and they just said men of god I don't know you but the spirit has led me you blessed me on facebook I've heard you preach someday and I just please pray for me stuff do, like do, that do you now understand why your grandfather said god wants to add yes to subtract so wow. it's it's like i i kind of and now i'm i'm fully aware of who i am yes that it's not going to be if one of the biggest people in ministry that inspire me and this might come as a shock is Joyce Meyer who has a virtual church virtual ministry mm. if you go look there's no church serious she has seminars she has all these get togethers oh. but there's no church wow i never knew that we so, see her preaching to and crowds we think that, no Serious. That is drawing that. There's like events, special like we call them events, we yeah. call them gatherings yeah. and gatherings things. exactly. Wow. So there is so many ways to pursue. Isn't isn't this guy also operating like that? Uh Ferguson. Ferguson something. His wife is Amanda. 
I'm not too sure. Yeah. But think, many I people. But the, as, he's I also in the cinema uh, 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 vibe yeah. auditorium. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pop up church. They call it pop up church. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's literally pop up church where. Um, wow. you, 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 what you basically do, you reach out to a certain area in that time frame and you have a gathering. And then you maybe talk about something in, in your book or whatever. It exactly, is and you share. Out. There's That's so amazing. many ways to spread the That's gospel. Amazing. There is, there is many ways. Like, like I heard a preacher say one time that Jesus, what God did with Jesus, he literally compressed Jesus and he put him in the Bible. And when we open it, we decompress who Jesus and who God is. Mm. This is why every time you can open, I can bet my life on it that every time you open the Bible, you will read something you never ever knew existed. That, that's, that's decompressing that's, the word. That's of God. exactly what it is. True. I, I can I can identify with it. So, and you want to tell me that we're um, gonna have it the same this yeah, after the same Sunday, Sunday after Sunday and with the and, and with the people that will walk out with somebody's ordained yeah and all that it, it's 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 just confusing. Pastor right? didn't greet them walking out. Yes, yes. come pop up yes. church. No one is there. No one knows. <laughs> Everybody's new. Yeah. Everybody, they don't really know you. Yeah. They're, 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 yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, so many times I don't introduce myself as yeah. evangelist yes. Leo dos Santos. Yes. I am. It's Leo. I I, I feel like that. I and like there that. comes a time where God is taking me through this season where a lot of people started referring to me as Prophet Leo. Mm. Because mm. the season that God has been taking me, mm. it, it's heavy in the prophetic yeah. side. Yeah. And and one of my best friends <laughs> was actually um, teasing me and he's like, yeah, he's a seven day prophet. Oh, yeah. And he could, and it's a joke, but God actually moved. There was a season where I just, with a, yeah. where, where God started speaking to me and said, allow this thing going to fast and I'm going to do some, a new thing within seven days. Wow. And it was a season on my Facebook even and people thought I'm crazy. We are prophesied to somebody I don't know. Yeah, IDK. IDK. <laughs> I don't know who this is for. Wow. And even you that's listening now, I don't know what you're going through. Yes. But all I know is we're in the seventh month and something needs to happen, like the completion. Everything that was locked up, I don't know who am I speaking to. And I know this is not even part of the program, but what everything that, that has been locked up for seven months or the past seven years, may God release it as you are listening to this in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So there's no program. This is a, <laughs> a pop-up talk show. <laughs> I love a pop-up. <laughs> wow, I'm blessed. I'm blessed so much. Uh, have you have you thought about uh, and I know I know it's it's in a pipeline, but if, can you maybe just say something about your book or something that you are busy with or <laughs> you would like to see? Because so, so, since so, I asked you, yeah, about where do so, you see yourself? So so basically, um, on the sixth of July, twenty seventeen, I was in a rough car accident. Okay, and I literally almost lost my life. Um, sure, the guy who drove into me was a taxi driver, and he did not make it. Wow. And God has carried me through. Well, that's all I can say. Wow. That the hand of God, if you had to see my vehicle, yes. till today I don't even have pictures. That's how bad it was. They told me, I don't, they don't want me to see how bad it was. Serious. And it's a Thursday. And the guy bumps me, I go into hospital. And we had the MRI scans and everything. And the lady says, so would you please move your legs? And in my mind, I moved my legs already. And she, she, She's starting to become frustrated with the fact that I'm not this patient is yeah. is, is ignorant. She doesn't see movement, yeah. but you I in my mind it moved. And then she comes and then she can actually realize something is seriously wrong. And she gives me time. She doesn't even tell me I'm gonna give you, she just goes. And I begin to cry and I'm like, Lord, I don't understand what's happening. And the word God gives me is when the enemy cannot cripple your faith, he will try and cripple you physically. And sure. this is why I understand the scripture when the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. That means he won't stop at anything. The wow. devil don't want to destroy. Either you do it, Mark. That yeah. is his purpose. He wants to, to wipe us yes. out. Yes. And in that point, that's when God started ministering to me. And he says, I'm going to use this for the advancement of the kingdom. I'm like, Lord, mm. but I've dedicated, I'm full time in ministry now. And all is all right, but how can this happen? It takes me to the book of John, the man who was born blind. Mm. Everybody asked the disciples, who has sinned? Is mm. it him? His parents? Who, what has happened? 
did something happen that he was in, 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 in this situation? And God says, no. I've allowed this to happen so that my power could be made manifest Hallelujah. in you. I was you. thinking about that scripture now. That's powerful. So God says, I'm, gonna allow, I'm allowing this to happen mm. so that people can see as this happened, I'm going to heal you, the Lord your God, mm. the, am, the I am that I am. So I'm busy compiling. I've been compiling yes, yes. all of that That's and, be and I've been writing on it. That, um, That's going to be powerful. So just sharing. It's, it's not, it's, the purpose is just to encourage Someone mm. wants to give up because life has knocked them down. Uh, I would like to do a, a documentary. Yo. <laughs> wow, yes, wow, 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 wow. That, that would be an honor. Is there something that you would just like to conclude with while looking again into the camera and just tell the person watching now? You know what? I want to speak to someone that is in a situation where you feel like all hope is gone. You've been from job to job, from interview to interview, and you at a point where whatever happens must happen. I want to speak to you and, and remind you that God is very much aware of what you're going through. The second thing is nothing you are going through catches him by surprise. The third thing is God is God all by himself. He doesn't need our situations to remind him that he needs to be God. And he will come through for you. On a prophetically declare, as you are listening to this, as you are viewing this video, that there will be a turnaround in your situation to the point when God blesses you, people will begin to speak and say, but how did this happen? Because a month ago you were struggling, you were on your knees, you felt like there was no hope. God is about to bless you. He's about to come through for you. Ask the woman with the issue of blood. It needs to get worse before it gets better. So when it gets worse, it's a sign that things are about to change in your favor. May God richly bless you. Thank you so much.